What's up guys? We're back with part two, player missile graphics on the Atari. We're going to do some good stuff today. We're going to advance the topic, so stick around. Don't go anywhere. So in this episode, part two of learning player missile graphics sprites on the Atari, we're going to build upon what we started with in the first video, which by the way, if you haven't watched the first video, I highly recommend you click the link and go check it out because it's the foundation for what we're gonna talk about today. Um, so we're gonna take the spaceship that we created in the last um, example or the last video, we're gonna rotate him a little bit so that he's facing up and down vertically and then we're going to expand upon moving the sprite um, vertically in memory on the screen. And we're gonna show you how to do that two ways. The first way is gonna be done in basic and you're gonna see it's very slow and the second way is I'm going to give you a small, uh, a couple assembly language or machine language routines that it's going to allow you to move your sprites or your players' missiles vertically very quickly in machine language. We're also going to talk about reading the joystick and we're going to allow the joystick to control the spaceship going uh, horizontally and also vertically. And then we're going to add a play field, a background, some different colors, and we're going to see our player or our sprite um, move in front of and behind those playfield objects, okay? Um, we're also gonna give you a little machine language routine for clearing the sprites in memory when you first start the program or when you start your routine. Um, as you can see last week, it was a very, in doing it in basic, was very slow poking those locations with zeros. Um, gonna give you a small machine language routine that will do that very quickly um, in machine language. So. Let's get into it. I think you're going to like this. We're going to get uh, our program uh, doing some really cool stuff. And um, let's get started. All right. Let's get into some coding, shall we? So I've got the original program here that we talked about in the first video. And let's just take a quick look at what it does. You can see that it clears the trash from player one and it moves that player horizontally across the screen to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left in a complete loop. So just as a quick review, what we did was we found our new top of memory with peak 106. We subtracted eight pages of 256 page memory and we created a new top based on poking that value back into 106. We set our graphics mode. We let our player base of our player missile graphics equal to that new top times 256. We poke that into 54279, which tells the system where our new top is and where we're going to start our player missile graphics. We set up our single line resolution. We enable player missile graphics, poking 532773. Again, this is all setting up the basics. We set player zero's color. We set the initial X position. We set the width to normal. We clear out the player data here. We're basically looping through player one uh, in memory, plus 120. Now player one's memory location starts at the top of the screen, way up here. And if we add 120, we basically start right at the top of the screen here, okay? So then we're filling from 120 all the way to 134 of his data. Actually, I take that back. Let's look at that one more time. Let's clear the screen. We're clearing the data here by taking the base of the player missile graphics plus 1024. If you remember 1024 in single line resolution, that's where our first player starts in memory. So the base address plus 1024, we're looping 256 times and poking it with zero. That's that clearing effect that you see when you run the program. You see that trash that gets cleared off the screen? That's how slow it is. That's one of the things we're gonna improve in the next version. We're actually going to replace this code right here, line 330, 40, 50, and 60 with a small machine language routine. And we're gonna pass it the location and memory where player one lives, and it'll go through and fill that, that memory quickly with zeros. So that's, that's one of the things we're gonna talk about today in improving with machine language. We came down here, we fill the player data with our spaceship, which is basically uh, 120 through 134 in that whole 256 
bytes of memory for that player. We're reading that data from some data statements that are later on in the program where we're poking them into memory. And then what we're doing is we're doing a loop here that basically moves the player from the 10 to the 220 on the x-axis. So 10 is just off the screen and 220 is just off the screen to the right. And then we're starting again from 220 back to 10. So it's basically moving the ship to the right and then to the left. So that's that program. Um, if you need to look at the previous video to get a more detailed explanation of how that program works, um, there's a link that I will include right now in the video. In case you missed it in the beginning, um, just click on it. It'll take you to the first video in this series where you can actually um, catch up on where we're at for today's episode. So let's type new and let's enter into uh, the second version that I called player 1B. And this is the more updated version of the program that we're gonna look at today. So that's gonna go ahead and load from our five and a quarter or 1050 disk drive. And then we're gonna take a look at the similarities. The, the first part of the, of the code is gonna be pretty much the same as the other one. Now I want you to ignore this first, these first two lines here. There's a go sub to 7500 where I'm initializing some machine language strings, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. So let's ignore that just for now. But as you can see, at the beginning of the part of the program, it's pretty much the same. Vertical position, horizontal starting position. Actually, one thing I did in this version here is I set up some variables. And the variables that I set up were vpause p1, which stands for vertical position of player one, 120. This is gonna track our vertical position of our player. And then I've got hpos p1, which is the horizontal position of player one. This is gonna track the horizontal position of the player. And then I've got the height of player one, which is six, meaning six bytes. And I decided to put these as variables so that we can make quick changes without having to go through the program and make a bunch of changes all over the place wherever the vpos is used or the h position is used or the height is used, okay? Um, we're setting our base here like we did before. We're poking that, uh, I'm sorry, we're setting the new top of memory here. By poking that in 106, we're changing the graphics mode here. I'm gonna basically, we're gonna, we're not, we're gonna ignore this go sub right now. I've got it commented out right now. This go sub here is gonna draw the background. It's gonna draw some colorful stripes as our background, but we're not gonna talk about that just yet. We'll leave that towards the end. We're getting the player base here, which is the new top of memory times 256, and we're poking that into as the new top for our player missile graphics, and so on and so on and so on. I don't want to waste a bunch of time going over this when we've talked about each one of these lines in the original program. So let's go down to line number 450. Okay, if you remember in the other program, we were clearing the player data with basic statements. We were basically looping through the beginning of player one in memory, and we were poking zeros from zero to 256 to clear out the entire height of that player, but using basic. What I've done here is I've got, and if you, if you, ha if you don't understand this syntax here of how to call machine language from Atari basic using a string, I'm gonna include a link right now above that talks about how I'm using machine language in basic using a string. So make sure you check that video out and it'll explain what we're doing here. So basically, uh, I'm setting player one, uh, the address in memory of player one as the player missile base, which is the base in memory where our player missile graphics have been established, plus 1024. And what I'm doing is I'm saying X, any variable you want, equals user routine, USR, this is how you call machine language from basic. And I'm saying, run the routine that is at the address of this memclr string. Now memclr string I have defined later on in the program as a string of Ataski characters. Each byte of that string represents uh, a machine language mnemonic or slash operand. So let's go down towards the end of the program where that's defined, which is 7500. Okay. Let's get rid of this for now, so we can just focus on this. Okay, so this line here, 7500, is just a remark that says, this is the machine language clear player missile in memory. This is also a line here that's commented, 
And the reason why this line is here is I, I included that in all of my uh, programs where I'm calling machine language to remind the user how to call the machine language routine. So for example, we're gonna call the address of the memclr string, which is the address of memory where the machine language program is, and we're passing it the first variable is the base of the player missile graphics times 256 and the, and the size of the area that we're going to be clearing, which is 2048 bytes. So this is gonna clear out the entire area, if you will, of the player missile graphics, because as we know, in, in single line resolution, it's 2K, 2048 bytes. So if you wanted to clear out the entire player missile graphics area and zero it out, this is how you would do it. Uh, this down here is the actual machine language code, memclr string, dimensioned to 36 characters, and then we assign it these bunch of characters. Now, I, again, I'm not gonna go into detail in this video on how I came up with these characters and what these characters, how they represent the machine language code, but for this, this video, we're gonna assume that these, carrier, these characters represent a small machine language routine that we can call and it will do something for us, okay? And that's why I have at the beginning of a program here, a GoSub 7500 right here, because before we do anything, I'm initializing the machine language routines so we have them in memory. Does everybody understand that? Okay. So let's go back where we were clearing the memory for player one. So basically now what we're doing is instead of using basic, we're calling this machine language routine. Um, we're calling the address of the mem clear routine. We're, plas we're passing it player one's starting address in memory, which we know is the base of our player missile graphics plus 1024 bytes. And if you remember, I'll put the graphic up, the slide up right now. In single line resolution, player one, his address starts at the player base, player missile graphics base address plus 1024. So that's why we're doing P1 here. So we know where in memory to start clearing uh, the memory for player one. And of course, in single line graphics, single line resolution graphics, uh, 256 bytes is the size of each player or each sprite. Each sprite is 256 bytes. So we're, what this is doing is it's going to the memory where player one is located or sprite one is located and it's clearing it out. And you're gonna see when we run this program, you won't even see that swiping effect on the screen. It's just instantly black. It clears the player out uh, without even being able to see it. So that's the first improvement we made to the program is that we actually have machine language clearing out our players. Okay, so now let's continue. After that, as we did before, we're filling the player data with read data statements. So we're going for y equals player one plus the initial position, which we know is to be 120, to the player one plus his initial position plus the height of him minus one, since we're zero based index. So that's basically gonna fill just the spaceship portion of the entire player with the pixels that we're including in our data statements to fill that spaceship, okay? Now, what I've done, and I'm gonna show you a slide here uh, right now, the original spaceship looked like this. It was oriented to the right, um, you know, with the tip facing right and the rear of the ship facing left, okay? What I did was I changed the orientation of the ship a little bit. I rotated him 90 degrees counterclockwise, which obviously changed the byte data. And you can see here the new byte data that we have for the new spaceship. So what I did was I modified the data statements in our program here to reflect the new spaceship uh, data, if you will, or bytes in memory. And we can go down here, I'll show you in the code. This here, as you can see, 24, 60, 60, 126, 255, 60. That is the new byte structure for our new ship. Okay, so our new ship is oriented up instead of sideways. So that was another change that I made here. We're still filling the data with basic here. We're reading the value, we're poking it in memory, and we're looping back. So that hasn't changed. The only thing that changed was our orientation of our ship. The next thing we're doing here is we're poking 53248. This is the initial exposition, if you will, of our spaceship. Um, I could have used the uh, horizontal position variable, which we'll change that in a minute. Well, actually, you know what? Let's actually do that right now since we have it. Um, as we can see here, H position I have, H position P1 is 120, so we may as well go ahead and use that variable. 
H position P1. So let's go here and make that H position P1. This will give it the initial position on the screen. All right, so. Now what we were doing in the old program is after we set that initial position, we were looping through and we were, we were basically moving the spaceship to the right and to the left through a loop. And we were doing it in code with this POG53248, okay? Now, what we're doing differently here in this program is we're reading the joystick. Okay, let me show you that code. So basically right here is our, what we call, what I'm calling the main loop, because this program is gonna basically go one, two, three, four, five, and go right back up to 640. One, two, three, four, it's gonna basically loop and loop and loop and look for the joystick movement. And based on the joystick movement, it's gonna move the player to the left, to the right, up or down, all right? So basically, the way you read the joystick in BASIC is with the stick keyword. And the stick keyword, you pass it a parameter of the joystick that you want to read, zero-based index. So stick zero is going to be physically joystick on port number one. That's going to return a value. And let me bring up a slide. This slide here is going to show you the values that are returned from the stick uh, command. And in decimal, you can also see in binary, the representation of the numbers that represent up, down, left, right, diagonal left, diagonal right, diagonal down left, diagonal down right, okay? So back in our code, we're only, for this demonstration, we're only concerned with left, right, up, and down. Those are the only movements we're gonna worry about at this point. So uh, 14 is gonna equal up, 13 is down, 11 is left, and seven is right. So if we go, if we go up, then we're gonna call go sub 730. And if we look at 730, we're gonna see here that basically we have a machine language routine here. Move player up machine language. Now this is another machine language routine that I've incorporated into this program. It's, it's stored in a string MVPL upstring. And what you do is you pass it the player one in memory, his starting address, plus his current vertical position, where he's at currently right now. This is why we have to track with the variable where we are. And then the second parameter is the height of the player one. So that's gonna be height P1. So this routine is gonna move the player up one pixel on the screen. Once that comes back successfully, we're gonna take the vertical position and assign it to whatever the vertical position is, minus one. We must keep track in our program where we are so that the next time we call move player, we can tell it exactly where we are now at the new location. Uh, let me expand this out a little bit because there's two versions of this, there's two versions of this move command that I wanna show you, okay? And we're gonna start off with the basic one. So line 737, 47, 60, 770, that right there, these lines right here are the machine language version. That's the fast version. I also have another version which uh, happens on line 771 through 840. And you can see there's a little bit more code in here, but what it's doing is we're manipulating memory in basic here. We're basically looping through the height of player one, okay, which is six bytes, and we're poking in memory the new position of player one, comma, the old position of player one. So what we're doing is line by line, we're taking the bottom of the ship, let's say we're moving the ship up. I was, let's, let's, I'm sorry, let, yeah, let's say we're moving the ship up. We're taking the top of the ship and we're moving that byte up one. And then we're taking the second line of the ship and moving that one byte uh, one line up. So we're basically moving each byte one line up at a time. Uh, but as you'll see in basic, it's very slow, okay? So what I actually wanna do is we know that our basic version here is starting at 771. So let's make sure that our joystick up location goes to 771 because I want you to see the slowness in basic first before we look at the machine language version. So let's change this to 771. Now we know that if, we, if the joystick comes back with a 13, that means down. So let's look at 845. And we can see that 845 is also the machine language version of that, okay? But we also have a basic version here. Let's make the basic version take precedence first. So let's have our down movement go to line 890. 
So let's change our downward movement of our stick to 890. We'll leave the left and right alone because those routines really haven't changed. Those are still in basic. Because basic actually moves them pretty, pretty quickly. Okay? So we can just take a look at number 11, 960. And 960, what it does is this routine moves the player to the left. Let me just isolate this so you can see it a little better. So basically we say horizontal position equals horizontal position minus one, and we just poke that value into 53248. And for moving the player right, it's kind of the same thing. We take the horizontal position, except we add one to it, and then we poke that into 53248. Okay? So that's really, in a nutshell, the changes that we've made. Let's run the program. So there is the new spaceship. As you can see, it's facing up and um, kind of a triangle looking guy. So I'm gonna grab my Starfighter, ultimate joystick here, okay? And I'm gonna move the joystick to the left and you're gonna see our spaceship move to the left. I'm gonna move the joystick. Let's see if I can get this focused in a little better. Can we, can we, can we, can we? Yeah, let's move it to the right. Now we can see our spaceship moving to the right. Now watch what happens when I move the joystick up. Do you see that very clunky, slow, sloppy movement? Now watch down. See how slow that is, that very slow climb. Left and right is, is fast, that's not a problem because we're actually moving the sprite left and right um, horizontally, on, 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 but we're not actually moving it in memory. When we actually have to do memory operations in basic, this is where it actually gets uh, pretty slow, all right? So, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see how slow it is in basic. It's interrupt the program. Let's go down and change to the machine language version of each routine. So, instead of going to 771 when we move the stick up, Let's go to here, 730, which is move the player up with machine language. So going up, let's go to 730. Let's run, grab our joystick. So now watch what happens when we go up. See how much faster and smoother this? Here comes down again, which is still in basic. Very, very, very slow and inefficient. Left and right is still good. Downwards, very slow, but up. Very smooth, very quick. That's why we have these machine language routines that we can use in basic. So let's go ahead and change our downward movement now to move to 845, right? So let's move, let's change that to 845, which is gonna be this guy right here. All right, let's clear, let's run. All right, so now let's see what we got. Down is smooth, up is smooth, left is smooth. So there you go. That's how we move our spaceship efficiently. Left and right, up and down. You can see how much faster and smoother machine language is. Now we could actually move him faster if we were not moving just a pixel at a time. Let's say we were doing a fraction of a pixel at a time, like maybe a step one or a 1.5 or a two, we could actually move him faster, but that's pretty good for now. So there's three routines, and I don't know if you noticed or not, but when we run the program, you don't see that wiping effect on the screen, that the, the spaceship just appears. That's because that clearing routine that was originally very slow is now happening in like half a second or less. All right? So let's add one more thing to our program. It's already here. I just have it commented out. Line 205 is a go sub to 8500. Now let me show you what 8500 is. 8500 is a small routine that draws a background, okay? Um, we basically have a start variable at zero, and we have an end variable, which is gonna actually be the color that we're gonna use to draw the object. We're setting our background color to zero, and we're saying in a loop here for strip, meaning color strips, one through six. We're gonna create six color strips as our background. And each time that we draw a strip, we're gonna set the color to N, and every time we go through the loop of creating a strip, we're gonna increment n by one. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. When we end up at four, we're gonna reset it back to one. So we're gonna have color one, color two, color three, color four, back to color one, back to two, and three, four, and so on. Um, so this is gonna draw six colored strips from the top of the screen to the bottom. And let's see what that looks like. 
So as you can see, we've got orange, green, blue, orange, green, blue. Now, watch what happens. You see how the ship goes behind the orange, the green, but on top of the blue. Behind the orange, behind the green, on top of the blue. If you remember, uh, back when we were doing our original program, there was a poke statement that controls the priority of the background field and the players and the players amongst themselves even. So that was originally a one. So I'm gonna put it back to a one, which gave the player the priority of all background objects. And now that I have it set to one, you see now how the spaceship flies over every single one of these guys, okay? Now let's go back and put that back to eight, and that's gonna give us the illusion, or it's gonna give us the ability, uh, what line was that on? Let's see, line number 310. Let's put it back to eight. And once again, we're back and behind. So the play field, the colors, and with that poke statement, you can control which objects the spaceship flies in front of, and which object it flies behind, okay? So there you go. We've got our machine language clearing our memory for our players. We've got machine language handling our up and our down movements. And we've got a play field now that we can move the object into uh, behind and forward, okay? And we learned how to read the joystick port as well. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, I hope this was uh, uh, informative for you. Um, the more you work with player missile graphics, the, the, the quicker you'll become uh, and proficient with it. And probably what I'll do eventually is these machine language routines will be in separate files that you can incorporate into your projects. The setup for the player missile graphics, setting the memory up, uh, poking certain values, that'll also be modulized into a separate file. And what we wanna do is we want to be able to work ourselves towards creating a game. I have an idea for a simple game, uh, almost like a Space Invaders, where this ship is gonna move back and forth at the bottom. Um, the next episode, what we're gonna get into is missiles. We're actually gonna have this guy fire a missile. When you hit the, the fire button on the joystick, we're gonna have him fire a missile up and uh, try and hit um, some objects that, uh, that we're gonna create that are gonna be floating around in the, in the screen. And then I'd like to get to the point where we actually create a star field. All right, so practice your uh, player missile graphics. I'm gonna include the source code for this demonstration on the website, www.8bitandmore.com. And if you're interested in seeing the assembly language for the clearing of the memory, the moving vertically, and the moving down, I'm gonna include the source code for those as well on the website so that you guys can take a look at that as well, all right? So don't forget to subscribe if you like the video. Uh, check out my channel, I've got a lot of other videos on there that talk about programming in basic and assembly language on the Atari. And the cool thing is a lot of what you're learning or what you can learn on my videos can be applied to other platforms. Um, the assembly language routines with very little modification can be run on a Commodore or a PET. They're all 6502 8-bit based uh, processors. So what you learn with me here, you can apply it to other platforms as well. So don't forget that. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and give me some comments below. If you like what I'm doing, if you think I should continue this series or any suggestions for any changes that I should make. All right, take care guys.